Welcome back, familiar to Northside LDN. And today we've got the Arsenal Voldemort Julian coming out and saying Arsenal versus Man City is a fight between good and evil. I don't know if this Filo da Puta thinks this is Dragon Ball Z. I don't know what he thinks it is. But without further ado, Caramba, let's get straight into it. Let's go, Caramba. A financial boost, though. Are you asking if they're still evil? Yeah. Is that the question? Well, there's 115 charges that would indicate that they are, but we don't quite know the result of that yet. But we've got a fair indication that at least some of those charges will stick mm -hmm. and um, the verdict will come that perhaps they are very evil. You seem quite, you seem, you seem quite a smug saying that. You seem like you will really enjoy when it comes through, which I'm sure many Arsenal fans will look that when those charges do complete and you know they get their punishment. It's not just Arsenal fans, it's every fan of the beautiful game of football. What is this filo da puta talking about? This flipping cottage pie and chips, bangers and mash, R9, yeah? What is this filo da puta talking about, bro? What is this budget R9 from the flipping calf talking about? What are you talking... Why are we talking about flipping FFP charges and 115 charges to Man City in a game that Arsenal drew with Man City? What's that got to do with anything? They have not been charged about anything. But the narrative has to be moved. Why? So that there's an excuse. If we don't win the league, well, remember, it's good against Eastbourne. Bro, is this guy 10 years old? Is this guy watching Dragon Ball Z? Is this, is this Disney, bro? What's this Filo da Puta talking about? Talk about the game. What did you think about the game? But instead, he's got nothing else to say about the game except for, oh, hopefully they get the charges for good and evil. This is the narrative that you man want to go with, yeah, in case we don't win the league. Oh, well, we can't compete against Man City. Good events, evil. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look at all the money that they've been spending. Of course, we can't compete with them. This is why we can't beat them at home. Nothing's been proven, bro. Nothing's been proven. And if the shoe was on the other foot, all these Arsenal are uh, sexuals. All of these Filus da Puta would be saying, oh, the league has got a conspiracy against us. We haven't been charged for anything, but they're against us. These men already cried that everyone's against us just for refereeing decisions. VAR, the referee not giving the card that they want or not making the, the, the call on the foul that they want. What are we talking about? We don't know anything. So what is the point? This is not the time for speculation. This is the time to get the three points every single game to the end of the season to win and remain and, and, and be champions. That is what we should be talking about. Instead, we've got this Voldemort thinking he's he's the prisoner of Azkaban, talking about, oh, but, but oh, but conspiracy this, conspiracy that, this flipping filo da puta, little Britain, I need bitty filo da puta talking rubbish, bro. What are you chatting about? Talk about the game. Talk about the game instead of spinning narratives about, oh, of course we can't compete against City. Well, we played we played decently, but of course we can't beat them. You know, good versus evil. Look how much money they spent. Right to one cool, bro. Right to one cool. Liverpool were able to compete with them. And they spent more less money by the time they got two major honours than this manager, Arteta, has. So what are we talking about, good versus evil? What kind of book are is this, bro? This ain't a Marvel's movie, bro. This isn't the Avengers. I don't know what this guy's chatting about, bro. Do you know what I mean? With his flipping bald head looking like Thanos, bro. I don't need this Thanos bald head filled up puta talking rubbish. Talk about the game. How about that? No one likes to see cheating. Everyone likes to see the game played in the way that it should be played. <laughs> And if it is proven, and I don't know whether it is, um, I, can only, <laughs> I can only hope that... You can't hold back I, that smile. I can only hope that justice prevails. <laughs> I, let me I can only hope justice prevails. Bro, why are we not just focusing on the game? What? This is irrelevant. This is irrelevant, but typical. Typical of this fan base. Always a narrative to be spun. Always a story to be sold. I'm telling you. These men can do the job for the Sun and the Daily Mirror. Why are we talking about their charges? How about us just win the league? How about you give us your what you think about the game? How about that? Instead of talking about nonsense, about charges that haven't been proven. And then if the charges are dropped and Man City don't get the charges, you're going to apologise. The same way you finished up with always waiting for an Arsenal apology. Because we kept the pressure on. Because, oh, look at what Super Mikateta is doing. This is an irrelevant conversation. Why are we talking about the flipping charges at Man City? It is petty, bro. You are not five years old. Look at this guy. Looking like Dobby, bro, from flipping Harry Potter. Do you know what I'm saying? 
I don't know what's going on. Maybe Saucy Santana's given given him a sock. Since he's given him a sock, Dobby's now owed by Saucy Santana. Do you know what I'm saying? And now you're just spinning out whatever they want him to say. Oh yeah, get behind. Oh, oh yeah, but it's good versus evil, bro. You're flipping sixty years old, bro. Sixty years old. Do you know what I'm saying? Man is the age of them man that go to William Hill to go put a bet on a horse, bro, and spend their whole. That's their Saturday evening. Not not going out dancing with gal. Not going out having a good time popping bottles. Man's going William Hill, putting a bet on a horse. What's this filo da puta talking about, bro? It's so irrelevant. But anyway, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving because there's more. There's more. We can't even just say, you know what, we're content with the draw. Nah, nah, nah. There has to be more narrative. So let's keep going. Let's keep going, family. Let's keep going. People who we know are always going to be up for it. Yeah. Today, just like Stripto said, they look really ordinary, man. Yeah. They, they look like, I don't know, Brentford players. You know what I mean? Look at Fodin today. World class Fodin, Ferdinand. World class Fodin. He was giving. That's a good point. I forgot no, no. Was, uh, Fodin was playing. Let's talk about that. You know, I was sitting with the ops. So yeah. I had inside information. <laughs> All of them were having a go at him at the first half. He was giving away all the possession. He was really poor. Yeah. He was really poor. Point. And Still I know people point. can come at me and say, oh, what about Saka? Yeah. But the truth about the matter is today, Saka was doing a defensive job. So that's the excuse for him. Mm -hmm. that, bro, this Filu da puta, this Lloyd Banks from the Emirates, what are you chatting about? What are you chatting about? Oh, the excuse for Saka is that he's doing his defensive work. No Filu da puta, Saka didn't play well. And if you're quick to call out Foden, which Foden didn't have a great game, yeah? We can all see that Foden didn't have a great game. Keep the same energy for Saka. Because you can't be saying, oh, Starboy Foden didn't turn up. But when it's Saka, oh, he's doing a defensive job. You wouldn't accept that excuse from Foden. This is the problem. The po the post always gets moved. Oh, fully foot Foden didn't fit, didn't, didn't turn up. Bro, neither did Saka. Neither did Saka. So what are we talking about here? Neither one of them that's in this race about who's world-class Saka or Foden, neither, neither one of them turned up. So what, what's this chest? What is this chest? I don't understand it. And man trying to try and use the whole, oh, Saka's injured. Filo da puta, Sky Sports had just put out an hour ago that Saka is back in training ahead of the looting game. So Vaitu Manuko with that narrative about he was injured, yeah? And he's doing defensive jobs. Because if he was injured, why is he already back in training that fast? If he's carrying a serious injury, no, it's called calling him out. Calling him out in the fact that Saka didn't turn up in this game and it wasn't good enough. And he wasn't the only one. And I'm not just saying it was only Saka, but Saka, I'm sorry, was looking like Kodak Black. Man went back to looking like Kodak Black. I'm sorry, that ain't good enough for me. That ain't good enough. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not here for it. One of the biggest games of the season and Saka was looking like Tinchi Strider. The field that put that fell off. Let's call it as it is. But you want to be sending shots at, at Foden? Yeah, Foden didn't have a good game. But don't duck the fact that Saka didn't have a good game either. Don't come to me, oh, he's doing defensive duties. Yeah, he can he can defensively get back, but he can also score. He can also score a goal. When we beat Man City, 1-0 with a deflected goal, yeah, the, the Martinelli goal, the deflection, was he not doing the defensive job? And he was still able to attack and also score and be effective in the final third. So why can't Saka? If man are calling him world class, man is saying that he should be up there. Man is saying that he's getting in starting elevens with with Real Madrid and all this with all this crap. What is this Filo da puta talking about, bro? What is he chatting about? Looking like Chingy, bro. I'm done with this guy. We're talking absolute pucaria, bro. These guys always want smoke with everybody else, but when you look back at their team, there's always an excuse. Oh, he's doing the defensive work. He's doing the defensive work. No, he didn't, bro. No, he didn't. Ben White already had it on lock on the right hand side. He didn't need Saka. Because you man are always want smoke with everybody else, but you never have the same energy with your own players. This is the thing that annoys me with this fan base. It's always one energy for the others and another energy for yours. Saka dropped this stinker and he's been dropping stinkers this season. Let's keep it real. So what are we chatting about here? Man's getting man, chest for what? Chest for what? We drew the game. And both star boys for each team didn't turn up. What? What? Wh where is there a cause for all this chest? I swear down, I'm done with this filo da puta talking rubbish, bro. Who That's else? That's, obviously, we had Rice. They, they're they're good players, yeah. but who? Yeah. You know, Lee asked a question in his fan game, like, who's man of the match for Arsenal? Who? Who would you say was the standout? It has to be between Gabriel and uh, Saliba because yeah. listen, man, Haaland got a taste of his medicine today, man. That's that's again. That's just three times now this season. Yeah, he, he got. It was being thrown on the floor, man. Yeah. Ordinary tackle, the guy was going down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So you know, at the end of the day, he realizes he's not the only one that goes to the gym. We've got other people that go to the gym. <laughs> they take their weights, they eat their proteins. Yes. You know, and they shot them today. They, they, so they, I'm, they, I'm they, really. Really proud of these boys, you know okay. what I mean? And I was like, and I prefer it. Yeah, I prefer it. I... Bro, 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 how are you drawing for Haaland 
when when Jesus got pocketed as well. Both team strikers got pocketed, bro. Yes, you could talk about Haaland, but once again, you want to avoid any attention from our player. Jesus didn't turn up, bro. Jesus didn't turn up. What did he do with all the chances that he had? That field that puta was looking like flipping Cousin Skeeter from Nickelodeon, bro. He was looking like Cousin Skeeter. Do you know what I'm saying? So why are we only talking about Haaland? Yes, Haaland dropped a stinker. Haaland did drop a stinker. But so did flipping Cousin Skeeter, bro. So why are we not talking about that? Oh, because it doesn't fit the narrative. Oh, because it doesn't... Yeah, yeah, we have to always over-gas our players and say this and say that. I'm dead. I'm fed up of this flipping G-Unit, flipping Emirates, Lloyd Banks. What are you chatting about? Keep the same energy, bro. Keep the same energy. Because I tell you what, Odegaard dropped stinkers, and so did Jesus. Do you know what I'm saying? And so did Saka. Three of our, the, two of our front three dropped stinkers. Havarts, I'm not going to get onto him because actually Havarts was making runs. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah, our attacking, our attacking lineup wasn't wasn't sourcing like that. So why is it? Why are we not mentioning that? Oh yeah, because he's an Arsenal player. So when it's an Arsenal player, let's not bring it up. Let's not bring it up. Yeah, let's not bring it up. But Jesus was looking like cousin Skeeter. That is cousin Skeeter right there. Yeah, that was Jesus in front of goal. Chance after chance, balls coming in, doing nothing, bro. Doing nothing in front of goal. Looking like Cousin Skeeter, bro, from Nickelodeon. Então não vem aqui me falar da toa, a falar porcaria, porque não tem aqui mais paciência para tolerar essa porcaria, yeah? Let's just call it as it is. Call it as it is. You can call out Man City's players that didn't turn up. Also call out your own and say that you wanted better. Instead of overgassing it and celebrating as if we just got three points. We didn't. You can be content, but no way I can say pukaria overgassing the thing as if we just done a, a, a mad thing. Because we didn't. Talking absolute pukaria. Prefer to be the underdog? Because that way no one is going to look at you. Mm. But I know all the ops actually waiting for us to falter. But okay. guys, I'm an Arsenal fan. Any day, any time, I'm going to say it right here. We are winning the league. Enough said. We are winning the league. So why are you saying that you prefer to be an underdog? What's this underdog thing? Because this underdog thing looks to me that you ain't got chest. You want to act like you got chest, but that now you don't have chest. What's going on? This flipping budget North London little boosie talking absolute pukaria, bro. Absolute pukaria. How can you say, oh, I got chest. I'm going to say it right now as an Arsenal fan. We are winning the league. But then you want to be, but then you say in the other breath, oh, I, well, I, I prefer to be the underdog. Bro, right to man or cool, bro. These men talk rubbish. Rubbish. Say that it's a point that we will take and we will move. But at the end of the day, yeah, we much would have preferred getting the three points with the way that the game was, the chances that we had. Keep it real. I'm not even saying be angry. I weren't angry after the game. I was frustrated. But these men were not over gas. Oh, where was Foden? Where was Haaland? Bro, where was Jesus? Where was Saka? Where was Odegaard? Where was Jorginho making the through balls from deep? Where, where were they, bro? Where was Kivio when he was getting cooked by Bernardo? Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. You want to call out City? Call out the, your own club as well. I'm done with this guy, bro. Flipping Lloyd Banks thinks he's on fire. Filo da puta. What are you chatting about? Looking like a budget Crepton Conan, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Nah, man. Stop, stop chatting rubbish, bro. Stop chatting rubbish. Say it as it is. Say it as it is instead of overgassing, and every time it's our players. Oh, but Saka was defending. Oh, but oh, no, but, but we had good chances. I'm gonna say it with chess. Why do manuku so viado da merda, man? Always chatting rubbish, these lot. Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, Kirio, Tomiyasu, Zinchenko, and then we've got Timber coming back. <sighs> Arteta's done a masterclass. These signings have taken us from being a mid-table team to one of the European elites. Wow, wow, wow. A draw against City and it's an art at a masterclass. Masterclass. We've got, look, you can't even, look at him, look at this. Mogudishu Nipsey Hustle, Filo da Puta, is absolutely a lion for his teeth, yeah? We've gone from a mid-table club, yeah, to European elites. How can you be a European elite if you ain't won nothing in Europe? When we was in the Europa League, what did we win? What did we win, Filo da Puta? So how did we become a European elite? This is what I'm... These men drown every ounce of happiness in a result. I'm telling these Filo da Puta are draining, bro. I'm telling you, the Arsenal leeches, bro. These top red leeches, bro. Just leeching any little bit of happiness. What are you chatting about? European elite, a masterclass. The job ain't even done. The job ain't even done, so relax with the masterclass. Yeah, let's let him wait and make win a major honor, then we can maybe call it a masterclass. He ain't even won nothing yet. 
But these men don't learn nothing from last season that were 93% top of the league. What are you chatting about? This mogu dishu mog fara filu da puta talking a toa falada toa viado da merda. What are you chatting about? What are you chatting about? European elites. European elite. But we ain't won nothing in Europe. We ain't won nothing. But we're already talking with chess. We stumbled past Porto and you're talking about European elite. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Burnley of the Champions League, we stumbled across. We stumbled past it, but we're European elites. Okay. I love this manager. I love this club. I love the owners. There's nothing bad to say about this Arsenal team. When we start scoring goals, when we sign a world-class striker, Ossiman, this is a message to you. If you want to win every single trophy that's available, available to you, come join Arsenal. Because we don't concede and we create chances. If you play in front of this guy and he's doing through balls to you, he's scoring minimum 50 goals a season. Really? Minimum 50 goals a season? How come Odegaard couldn't even give Havertz one assist of Filu da Puta? How about that? How about that? This East African jar rule, Filu da Puta, yeah? It's murder, Filu da Puta, yeah? How about that? How come Odegaard couldn't even give Saka one assist? Couldn't give Jesus one assist? One through ball couldn't even do. What about against Havertz? Time after time, missing the chances, missing playing that ultimate, that killer pass into the front three. Every time was on a break against Man City. But you're saying for Osman, world-class Osman, world-class Osman, that world-class Osman in the AFCON, I knew you didn't watch it, so feel that puta, because you're too busy shaking your bum on TikTok, yeah? Doing TikTok songs, do you know what I'm saying? Doing Brazilian songs. What, what part of Brazil are you from? Feel that puta. But anyway, we carry on. We carry on, yeah? You budget Nipsey Hustle. Where... Did Osman perform for Nigeria when they really needed him? Even against Angolan fishermen, Angolan car phone warehouse workers, Angolan market sellers, fish market sellers, yeah? He couldn't even score, couldn't even perform Osman, yeah? Against Angola, bro, which is the, the Burnley of Africa because all our best talents go to Portugal. Where was Osman? You weren't calling him world-class then. How many times have you actually watched Osman? How many times have you watched him? But because you've got a forehead like yours that you can beam a projector off your forehead, yeah? And everyone can have movie night off of the front of your forehead. Everyone could do Netflix and chill with the front. Do you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, now you got chess. If I do my knuckles, I'll feel that puta. What are you chatting about? What are you actually chatting about? Talking rubbish, bro. Talking rubbish. Talking absolute rubbish, bro, about 50 goals. 50 goals. 50 goals. So how come none of our none of our strikers, if, if Osman with the service of Odegaard is getting 50 goals, how come none of our strikers can at least hit 20? Because Odegaard is going to guarantee you assists, is going to guarantee you chances, going to put it to you on a plate. How come none of our strikers can at least bag 20 goals? Explain that one, Filu that puta. You can't. You can't, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? East African, French, Montana, Filu da puta. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Doing cult boys. You know what I'm saying? Man doing them ski slopes. You know what I'm saying? Man's, man's done too much ski slopes. Now he's talking too much rubbish, bro. What are you chatting about, Filo da Puta? Talking rubbish, bro. Say it as it is instead of talking rubbish. Instead of talking absolute rubbish, bro. Stay off the ski slopes. Let's go. Um, Arsenal performance to be proud of today? I, I think so. Now, look, the other side of it, before I go into what I am really happy and proud of, is that we didn't really show, I think, the conviction in the final third we wanted to show. Um, did we really go for the win? I don't think so. I don't have a problem with that. I think you've got to play the long game in a title race. I know it means we've conceded control of the title race to Liverpool. If Liverpool go and then win their last 10 games of the season... Mm. Want to play the long game? Want to play the long game? OK, cool. Cool. You want to play the long game? That's fine. I want to win every single game to the end of the season. That's it. That's it, bro. I've had too much PTSD. I've seen this team crumble before when results don't go for us. I've seen a lot. Do you know what I'm saying? We still don't know if we lose against Bayern Munich. If we lose, which is a possibility. People didn't think it was a possibility of us getting knocked out to Porto. It came to the wire. We could only get through on penalties. If the results don't go for us in Europe, it may affect us in the league. It may affect us. Do you know what I'm saying? We haven't seen mentality monsters. Don't let these people start to try and, and fool you. Do you know what I'm saying? So let's see. It's all easy now because we're still in the title race to say, oh, let's see, you know, oh, it's good, you know, let, let, let's take it slowly. Let's take it slowly, bro. Games are coming thick and fast and we haven't got many games left. You know what I'm saying? And we're not top of the league. So listen, it's easy saying this right now. Let's see at the end of the season. Don't be telling me these are one of the games that cost us the league. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. Let's go. It's, it's fine.
It's fine. If this is what this is the narrative that they want, that's fine. Just don't backtrack. That's what I'm saying. Don't backtrack. <laughs> there does come a point, and, and, and the only reason we fell behind them is because we drew at the Etihad. Then there comes a point where you go, all right, we just weren't good enough. See, when this calms down, I'll go, we could have done more to hurt mm. them. But just in the moment, I, I'm, I just feel a lot of awe for this team because I was at the Etihad two years ago. The side that have taken points off their rivals are Arsenal. Mm. We're the only... Who would have said that at the start of the season? The Why does that matter? Why does that... Ultimately, if you don't win the league, it's irrelevant. Yes, we're taking... We're the only team to be taking points off of our rivals. If you don't win the league, it's as irrelevant as being 93% top of the league last season and not winning it. Yes, we've done good. Yes, our defence has been keeping us in games. This season, our defence has been great. Yes, getting a draw isn't an... Um, it isn't a rubbish result. It isn't, yeah? It isn't a terrible result. I'm going to keep it real. It's not, yeah? It's a decent result. You'll take it. But these men trying to go on like it's an incredible result. It's not an incredible result. It's not. It's not. Because before the game, you'd say, okay, going into going into the Etihad, you look at their record, you look at what they've done, you look at they, they're unbeaten how long in four months or whatever. You look at the records, you think, okay, cool. Maybe it's a bit too much of an ask to win. But I always want to win. Then you look at the game. Trossard could have squared it to, to Martinelli. Could have squared it across. You know what I'm saying? Trossard could have squared it across and we could have scored. Jesus had a number of chances that we should have scored from. A number of chances are taking too long. Then you look at Odegaard. How many times was Havertz making the right run and he wasn't feeding him through and giving him them through balls? You look at the game, you look at the chances, even though we didn't dominate possession, even though we wasn't amazing going forward, and it's missed chances because it's not just once or twice that Havertz made them through balls, uh, made them runs that needed a through ball from Odegaard. It was numerous times. And it wasn't just, uh, it wasn't just Havertz. It was Saka. It was Jesus. And... Odegaard was not releasing the ball. So when you look at all the chances that we created, it is disappointing. So to make this whole thing about, oh no, but it's fine. It's an amazing result. It's an amazing result getting a draw. It's not amazing. You'll take it and you'll be, okay, I'll be content with it. But I'm not going to overgas it. When these men trying to overgas it, oh, maybe after, say it as you, bro, these men are so reluctant to say how they feel. Because, oh, maybe somebody's going to call me negative. Someone's going to call me toxic. Filo da puta. Just say how you feel. Say how you feel. Do you know what I mean? If you don't think that the draw was good enough for the way that the game went and the chances that we had, say it. But then uh, I have to be, oh, no, but it's an amazing point. It's an absolutely incredible point. So filo da puta, flipping Harry Potter with the invisible cloak. So filo da puta. Say your opinion as you see it, bro. Stop talking rubbish. Stop talking rubbish. With the context, context, with the context of the game, we had enough chances to at least beat them 1-0. 1-0. In a game where Haaland was nowhere to be seen, Foden was nowhere to be seen, flipping Gre uh, 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 Jack, um, Jack Grealish wasn't doing much. Do you know what I'm saying? Bernardo wasn't doing much. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not out of the norm to just be real and say, yo, we could have done more. But these men are always reluctant to say it as it is. Oh, no, I don't want to be looked as negative. And who gives a crap of what these feelings that put on the internet got to say, bro? Say your opinion. It's like man wants to say it, but doesn't want to say it, bro. Typical Arsenal yes men, bro. We'd be in a three-horse race with Klopp and Guardiola, and we'd be the only ones with two wins on the board from our games against them. The two cancelled each other out. We made sure we got points away from home. And when they came to the Emirates at our home, we took the three points. Now, you might look back and go, a couple of times it could have slipped Havertz in, a couple of times. I agree. It's not missing chances that bothers me. It's lacking conviction when the openings are there. It's not missing chances that bothers me. It's lacking conviction when the chances are there. What are you talking about? Man just contradicted himself straight away in one sentence. It's not missing chances that frustrates me. It's lacking conviction when the chances are there. Well, when you're in front of goal and you miss that chance, that's lacking conviction. That is lacking conviction. Because if you had conviction, you bury that chance. So what are you talking about? But it sounds, it sounds amazing. It sounds amazing from Harry Potter. It sounds amazing, bro. It sounds amazing. Do you know what I'm saying? It sounds amazing from flipping Jeremy Carl's little son, bro. This filo da puta talking rubbish, bro. This flipping brown-headed Ron Weasley filo da puta talking rubbish. That is the same thing. Lacking conviction 
and not taking your chances is the same thing. What are you talking about? But you don't want to call the team out. You don't want to call it out. Because then you'll be cussed. Because then it's, oh, you're so negative. You can never be happy. Just say how you, bro, this is what I'm, I'm done with this guy, bro. I'm done with Sheldon, bro. The big bang Sheldon from North London, bro. I'm telling you. Dog, what are you chatting about? So you wasn't happy with the finishing, which means you weren't happy with Saka's performance. You wasn't happy with, with uh, uh, Jesus's performance. And you wasn't happy with Trossard's performance. Just say it as it is. Do you know what I'm saying? Alongside Odegaard. But no, you don't want to cast the boys because those are the boys who don't want to say it. Bro, just say it as it is. Say it as it is. You can be content and still be disappointed at the fact that we didn't take the most. We didn't do the most with the opportunities that we had. But no, we don't want to call it out. For once, I'm actually not even, I'm not even calling out Havertz. Because Havertz is actually, he was actually doing what needed to be done. Making them runs. It's not his fault he didn't receive the ball. It's not his fault that Odegaard didn't give him the ball when he's making the runs. He was doing his bit, getting himself in dangerous situations or starting counterattacks. Do you know what I'm saying? So just call it out as it is. And I don't even rate Havertz. And I ain't even, I ain't even, I ain't even buried my man. But no, instead we've got Big Bad, we've got Sheldon here, you know, doing the whole, you know what I mean, the political thing. I don't guess I better just feel that puta talking rubbish, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Ah, oh, man, I don't need Jeremy Carl. I need someone to say it as it is, feel that puta. Just say it as it is about, oh, I don't care about lacking, I don't care about missing chances, I care about lack of conviction. But to man, of course, of do that merda. Erdegaard, who I thought was brilliant today in everything but the final ball, mm. I think will be one who might look back and go, a couple of times he could have slipped Havertz in, a couple of times, you know, he could have just found that pass as suddenly the game opens up. I'm not being overly critical of him. I thought his work rate again was tremendous. He did some great things. It's fair to mention. That maybe doesn't leave you miles off in the title race. Mm. Ah, oh, you love this work rate. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But the work rate, yeah, from X players wasn't good enough, like Lacazette. Like so why are we rewarding work rate? We didn't care about work rate when it comes to Lacazette, deemed him not good enough. So we're talking about work rate. We care about end product. Stop talking rubbish. If it was all about work rate, we would have kept players like Lacazette. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm not even saying Lacazette was good enough. I'm just saying if the narrative is work rate, there was a lot of players that have had work rate and we deemed not good enough. So what are we talking about here? About, oh, he had a bit... Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being overly critical. He had work rate. Shut up, man. But it really deflates you. I think it's the opposite. It's not the 4-3 points, but I think it's going to be a really invigorating and belief fueling result for the Arsenal players. Can we win it? Yeah, 100% we can. Belief fueling, belief fueling result. Okay. Okay, bro. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Man thinks he works at the BP garage now. Man thinks he works at SO garage now. You know what I'm saying? Man thinks he works at the Shell garage now. Okay, belief fueling. We better win it. We better win it because I'm hearing a lot of chat. We better win it. That's all I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? It's not every single little thing I disagree with, but the, the, the way these men try and move the goalposts and try and act like, oh, I don't want to be critical. I don't really want to say how I really feel. I do my no cool. You know what I mean? To you guys, before the game, William Saliba is going to tell Erling Haaland, Haaland, my pocket's right here. Get in there. Three games against Haaland this season, zero goals conceded. <laughs> this guy is generational. William Saliba is the best centre-back in Europe. I'm saying that right now. Goes to the Etihad for the first time in his career at the age of 22 and gets man of the match. First thing, jewels won, possession won, clearances, tackles, everything first. He's generational. He doesn't only get man of the matches at the Etihad. He also goes to Anfield and gets man of the match performances. Okay, we got the best centre back in the world. Apparently, according to you, according to you, you know what I mean? The East African Tory lanes. Apparently, a masterclass. We are now giants in Europe, European elite now. Yeah, European elite because we drew to Man City. Cool. We better win a major honour. You're not going to submit new map career. We better win a major honour now. Yeah, because all this gas is cool. All this gas is calm. We better deliver then. Don't give me no excuses. Don't tell me no pukaria. Do you know what I'm saying? And man, they're talking about, oh, Harlem being pocketed. Yeah, Saka got pocketed by, by Vardio. But no, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk, oh, but he had an injury. Oh, call the A&E. Call the A&E. Man down, man down. Man down. Get the medipack. Get the med kit. Get the med kit. It's Fortnite. Get the med kit for Saka. He's injured. He's injured, yeah? He's injured. Oh, he's back in training. He's back in training ahead of the looting game, yeah? But apparently he's injured. 
Apparently he's injured. Stop being a flipping top gooner, flipping defense lawyer, and say it as it is, and stop talking pokeria, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? You want to talk about getting pocketed? Not only did Vardio pocket Saka, yeah, Jesus was also pocketed as well. What did I feel that to do? Is he not a striker? He's not a striker. So it's only accountability for the opposition. Because Haaland's a striker and he didn't score. Well, rinse him. But when is Jesus? Oh, he did well. He dug in deep. Look at the work rate. Look at the work rate. Bro, we need some work rate on that hairline. Stop hiding that hairline. Let it out. Yeah, and stop put that Ghostbusters cap on. Yeah, and let's see what's going on behind that cap. So, feel that puta. Let us know what's really going on. We you talk about work rate. This is what I mean, bro. This is what I mean. Yeah, of course Haaland didn't have a great game. But neither did Jesus. But there's no mention about that. There's no mention about that because that doesn't go with the story. Do you know what I'm saying? Good versus evil. Good versus evil. Is this Goku versus Cell? Is this Goku versus Majin Buu? Feel that puta. I swear down, these men are just... Oh, bro, whatever. He's shut down Liverpool like Anfield as well. This guy is so good. You cannot tell me in the comments. Any centre-back that is better than William Saber this season. At the age of 22, he's going to get better and better and better. Shout out to Gabriel Mangalesh. They are the best centre back duo. Them two at the back, we're not going to see any goals. Just check how many clean sheets we've got. And people are saying you went for a draw. No, we didn't. You know, the last time Man City didn't score at home, it was 882 days ago. Uh, uh, bro, whatever. Listen, Saliba, Saliba is a baller and so is Gabriel. Yeah, both of them are doing incredible this season. They're doing very, very well. But I'm sick and tired of this guy's face, bro. Man looks like flipping one of the ants from Bugs Life. I'm not even listening to Bugs Life, bro. Just keep it moving, bro. This guy's just overgassing everything, yeah? And when it comes crawling down, we'll see, innit? We'll see. Where were you today? Saliba, check your back pockets. Check your back pocket. Highland might be in there. And to everyone that said, where was Saka today? Saka went off injured. He was carrying an injury. What can he do? Play with like, play 50% fit. The a person that actually had a stinker, a fully fit full Foden, did nothing the whole game. He had a stinker. But to finish... You see? You see? That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Just deflect. Deflect, deflect, deflect. Jesus is so injured, he's back in training. Back in training. Must be a horrible injury. Must be a it must be a season ending injury. This man chatting rubbish, chatting rubbish. Every time Saka drops his thinker, man comes off the pitch like he's been doing hopscotch. You know what I'm saying? Man just limping, 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 lean with it, rap with it, lean with it, rap with it. What are you doing? I don't care, bro. Man, guy was looking, bro. That was a dead performance by Saka, and I'm gonna say it, bro. I don't care if his head's looking like Sonic. I don't care if he's called Star Boy. I don't care. The stars are aligning. Filus da puta. Nah, but I'm not hearing it. He didn't have a good game, call it out. If he didn't have a good game, call it out. I have no fear in saying if a player I don't even rate has a good game, I'll say he has a good game. If a player I rate has a good game, I'll say he has a good game. But if he has a bad game, I'll say he had a, ba he had a bad game. And this ain't the first time. But it's always an excuse for Saka. It wasn't good enough. When you're one of the top guys in your flipping club, you are expected to perform. That is the expectation. These players take the big wages. They take the contract extensions. They take all the accolades. They take all of that, bro. When things go well, when things go wrong, the big players are also held to account. It's not only lording them up when things go good. When things don't go well, and in this game, it was more an in terms of the attack that didn't go well. The defense played very well, very, very well. When things don't go right going forward, you need to be called out. How many games have we needed Saka to turn up and he didn't? Against Porto, we needed him to turn up. Yeah? Obviously, Rea stepped up and we got through. We needed him to turn up. He didn't turn up. He didn't turn up, bro. Against Fulham, against West Ham, against teams like that. Man ain't turned up in certain games. But now all of a sudden, oh, no, no, but he's injured. He's in There's always an excuse. But these men are ready to smoke Foden. Was Foden not part of Project Youth? Wait, he needs a couple more years to grow. Isn't that the narrative when it's an Arsenal, when it's an Arsenal player? Say it as it is, man. Stop with this bucaria, bro. What's this guy talking about? What's this guy talking about? I'm done with this, bro. This guy looking like shotty from flipping, bro. What's this guy talking about? Looking like shotty next to Takashi six nine, bro. Filo da puta talking rubbish, bro. Call out the other, call out your own players as well. Finish it off, guys. Liverpool 67 points. Two points behind them, Arsenal with 50, 65 points. And Man City with 64 points. I'll take the draw. And we're going to go to the next game. And it gets Brighton away. And we're going to win.
I'll take the joint of the week. Yeah, cool. No problem. No problem. We've got the next one coming up. Let's go. City fans are upset. First well, upset time, about what? First time they've not seen they're their team. They're lucky they didn't lose. First time they've not seen their team score. You're damn right. Um, oh, they're upset. Oh, my gosh. My golly gosh. Now, let me think. When they won 4 1, what were they saying? If I remember quite rightly, and you can correct me, they came jump and you say, Robbie, Robbie wants to score. No. And did I react? Why were you upset? I was. <laughs> this is too much, bro. This is too much. I, I, bro, I'm lost for words when it comes to Ty, bro. This guy is the most shameless guy. Look at him. Man is like, man, man, what's the chest about? What is the chest actually about? I don't even get it. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. It's upset. Okay, then. But I didn't so, react. So the boots are another foot now, isn't it? It's all right for them, isn't it? The boots now, could have been in your head yeah. if those police <laughs> weren't there. Robbie, <laughs> separate Robbie, everybody. Why are you right? them for Ty. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, if you have to sign one player from each of the top four, who would oh, it be? Oh, my God. Unique now. I don't even know. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, God, I don't, even, I don't even know this top of the team. Uh, Son? Who? What? No. Uh, <laughs> Bro, the shamelessness. Man said, "Son, would you sign Son? You have to pick a player from each of the big six teams. Would you? Which Tottenham player would you take?" Man said, "Son." He goes, "Who?" <laughs> this is the same man that then will rate Reese Nelson, rate it El Nene, rate all these players that ain't good enough, rate Inketia. But when it's Son, who? <laughs> oh my days! Ah, uh, the shamelessness, the absolute shamelessness of this fiddle da puta, this flipping. This flipping master splinter, bro. This master splinter from Ninja Turtles. Let's keep going, bro. Looking like a nitty from King's Cross. Madison? No, definitely not. Madison Avenue, yeah. Madison, definitely not. That's what I'm saying, man. Madison, a great group. No. Bro, uh, nobody. I know. Jed, Jed Spence. And he's not. He's on loan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question. Right. Um, <laughs> for Tyrone. No, my name right. is Tywon. No, 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 no. Next. No, I'm not answering that question. You you can... No, I'm not answering the question. No, I'm not answering the question. If you can't address my name properly, forget it. I'm not answering the question. I don't care. I'm not answering right, the question. Christian for Ty. <laughs> oh, no, nah, no. Nah. What's my name? Look how rattled he gets, man. Look how rattled he gets. No, I'm not answering the question. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not answering the question. <laughs> Oh, this feel of that puta, bro. I swear down. Oh, my days. Let's keep going, man. Let's keep going. I swear down. Let's get into the comments. Listen, before I get into the comments, smash the likes up, familia. You know what I'm saying? Let me know your thoughts on the game. Do you know what I mean? Let me know how you lot see the game. But this is how I see the game. With a bit of time to cool off a little bit, yeah? I'm still... I'm content with the game, with the outcome of the game. I'm content... Yeah, but I won't say I'm gassed or I'm majorly happy. That's me being honest. I'm not angry. I know a lot of people think I've only got one emotion. I don't have any more porcari. I saw, okay, I saw. I explain, I tell my dad, I tell. And if you don't like it, I don't have any more porcari. I say it the way I see it, and that is it. You agree with me? You agree with me? If you don't, you don't. It is what it is. It is what it is. But let me say this. The way we set up, I don't blame Arteta. The lineup, I would have preferred Martinelli on the left. That I do give blame to Arteta. I don't blame Arteta in Jesus missing those chances. I don't blame Arteta for Odegaard. I don't blame Arteta for the fact that Kivio was getting cooked on the left hand side. I don't blame Arteta, the fact that Trossard didn't play the ball through. I think it was, was it to I think it was to Saka or Martinelli or whatever. You know the chance I'm talking about, yeah? To Martinelli, yeah? I don't blame Arteta for that. I blame him for playing Jesus. And I blame him for taking so long to make a substitution, yeah? Attacking substitution to kill the game off. That is where I blame Arteta. The fact that you're bringing on Tomiyasu and Partey, before you're bringing on Trossard and Martinelli, for me, is cowardice. That is where I blame Arteta. The chances missed, I do not blame Arteta. I blame the players. I blame those players that were in those positions. Odegaard, you're to blame for not putting the ball through to the front three. Jesus, you are to blame for the fact that you didn't take your opportunities and you had more than one, more than one opportunity. I blame you for that. Trossard, I blame you for that opportunity through to Martinelli. Yeah, that is why I blame those players. Yeah, 
Kivior, you getting cocked by Bernardo Silva, I put that on you. You give him space. If you see a player's technical like that, you give him space. You don't get too close to him so he can burn you. And making and forcing the manager to make a change, which was the right change to bring on Tomiyasu instead of Kivio, because Kivio, because Tomiyasu, sorry, Kivio was getting absolutely cooked by Bernardo. Yeah, this is the problem for me. It's split blame. I wanted us to drop back, allow Man City into a false sense of security, play a high line, think that because they got all the possession that they can dominate the game, and then hit them on the break. But what I wanted was conviction when we get into those spaces and into those positions and we didn't have the we didn't have the conviction that is on the players the fact that the manager could see that Jesus wasn't performing to the level necessary and it took you 72 minutes to get him off that is on the manager for me that is on the manager if you see it ain't working take it off you took off Kivi on the 60th minute why didn't you take off Jesus you could have you could have seen that it wasn't working down that left hand side from the whole game the only the only luck that city was getting was through our left hand side which was Jesus and Kivio. Change it earlier. You change it earlier, you bring on Trossard and Martinelli. We might score, we might not. But if we don't score, I can at least say, do you know what? Arteta, you went out there, you saw it wasn't working, yeah? You changed it at half time, or you changed it before half time, yeah? And you know what? You had a goal. You had a goal, yeah? And not a goal into, oh, we just throw the kitchen sink at it and we just let every, every filo da puta go forward and we don't have no defensive structure. I'm talking about, Everybody's sitting back, but when we counter-attack, you've got the speed of Martinelli. You've got Trossard now in. You take off Odegaard. Why was Odegaard not taken off? Why does Odegaard see? Why did that Filo da Puta see 90 minutes? Explain to me how Odegaard deserved 90 minutes. And that is what disappoints me. That is what makes me leave the game frustrated. And yes, there's other games that we've dropped points and there's other games where we haven't been good enough and we didn't come out with a draw. We've dropped points. We lost all three points. Bro, at the same time, yes, those games are bigger to why we what we may not win the league. We're still in it, but it's frustrating. It is frustrating that you could have gone for it against a City team that weren't offering anything going forward, even when they're making changes. The fact that this manager saw Doku and Grealish lining up, coming on, and you're not making a change? You're not making a change. Come on, bro. Who do you think you are? You're not making a change, but Doku and Grealish are warming up. That, to me, as much as it didn't work, that was intent by Pep to try and get the three points. Ultimately, I did think he was a bit cowardice, but at least he tried to go for it. He tried to go for it. I know he didn't try to lose it, but he tried to go for it. What, what, what can I take from two substitutions in the 66th minute, both defensive players? How does that make any sense? How is that you going for it from the perspective of Arteta? That's how I see it, isn't it? You know what I mean? That's what I. That's how I see it. But family, we're gonna get into the. We're gonna get into. We're gonna get into you lot's current. Um, lot's comments. Um, what's this? The narrative that it was an exceptional point, bro. It wasn't an exceptional point. It's a point that we will take, but a point that, with hindsight or context, like these lot like to use of the game, we should have gone for it. We should have at least scored one of them. One of them chances, bro. Do you know what I mean? Well, I Odegaard needs to eat fufu. Bro, that filo da puta needs fufu, bro. He needs yam. He needs mandioca. He needs everything, bro. Do you know what I mean? He needs cassava. He needs everything, bro. He needs yuca. He, he needs banana dose. He needs everything, bro. He needs feijão. He needs everything, bro. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm telling you, bro. That's what he needs, bro. Because that, that weren't good enough, man. That weren't good enough. You know what I mean? Man calls himself a striker but can't take simple chances. If you're talking about Jesus, bro, that 100% I agree with you, bro. 100% I agree with you, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? But yet we're cooking Haaland, bro. I swear Haaland's got more goals than, than Jesus. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, bro. When it's Haaland, the narrative is he must finish his dinner. When it's our players, oh, but context, oh, but the player was ill, uh, the player was injured. Oh, this, this, that, but I don't want to go cansado dessas desculpas. Esses, esses, esses aqui a falar em toa, bro. I'm tired of it. Tired of it. Um, uh, Ollie Watkins, Ivan Tony would have scored at least one of them Gabriel chances. I would bet my left arm on that. Bro, facts, bro. Facts, but that's uncomfortable conversations, bro. These men don't want to hear that. Aston Villa are fighting for Champions League football. So difficult as for Chelsea, they will find another gear just to end 
uh, our season. Bro, this is what I'm saying. We've got a lot of games. And this is where I'm frustrated, yeah? Because this, bro, okay, yeah, it wasn't guaranteed we're going to get three points against Man City, yeah? Luton are going to have a goal. Let's keep it real. We are expected to beat Luton, and I expect us to beat Luton. I do. Luton, bro, they'll have a goal. And right now, too many draws, you might as well pack up the league. There's no point. If we get, if we get, for me, yeah, if we get another draw, I think this, I think the league title's done. It's done. The fact there's a free horse race, if we get another, another draw, for me, it's done. If we get two more draws, 100% put the nail in the coffin of that filo da puta ate and get that marica da merda out of my club. Get him out of the club, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? We cannot afford any more Cousin Skeeter performances. I cannot be having Jesus looking like this. Cousin Skeeter, bro. To in Cousin Skeeter performances, bro. This Fido da Puta better step up. I do not expect Cousin Skeeter. I expect a proper striker, bro. So that's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? When I see flipping, flipping potato head, uh, flipping Jesus looking like this, you know it's going to be a long day. Do you know what I'm saying? So listen, it is what it is, yeah? It is what it is. But for me, we bro, we got some hard games. Aston Villa is not going to be easy. Luton are going to have a goal. Like I said, I'm talking about not necessarily that we're going to lose, but a draw right now is as, is as bad as a loss for me. Drawing games right now is as bad as a loss. It's as bad as a loss. Because then you're, you're relying on Liverpool to drop points and Man City. And yes, they may drop points. But an accumulation of too many, too many draws, bro, it's going to be long. Luton are going to come, come at us. They're going to have a go. Brighton, Brighton, we saw the other day, they ain't easy. Look at how they were playing against Liverpool. Ain't easy. Ain't easy. A Brighton team that every, a lot of people writ off, yeah? They turned up. They turned up. Yeah, they needed a little bit. If they were more clinical, if, if Brighton were more clinical, yeah, in the first half against Liverpool, when they were absolutely cooking them, cooking Bradley as well down the left-hand side, could have been another game. So that means that they're up for it. They're going to have a go. They're having a go against, you know what I mean, the pressing Kings Liverpool. So they're going to have a go against Super Mikel Tau. You know what I'm saying? So listen, that ain't an easy game. Of course, Brighton and Luton are two games we expect to win. We still got Bayern Munich. Yeah, we got Aston Villa in the middle of Bayern, both Bayern Munich um, legs. We don't know if, that, if the Champions League, if it doesn't go the way that we want it to go, just like it was going sideways against Porto, we don't know if that's going to have an effect. I, I will hope that it doesn't have an effect on our league position and our and the way that we're playing in the league, but you never know. Yeah, then you've got Aston Villa that's already been able to stink a 1-0 against us. Okay, cool. They cooked Kivio on the left-hand side. Um, sorry, not Kivio, Zinchenko. We're now playing Kivio on that left-hand side. But still, like you saw against Bernardo Silva, Kivio isn't this be-all, end-all player that a lot of players, a, a lot of top gooners are trying to say that he is. Let's keep it real. He's not. So, at the end of the day, he can get cooked. Do you know what I'm saying? Kivio can get cooked, even though he's been playing decently, he can get cooked. Do you know what I mean? Then you've got Wolves, that isn't an easy game, and they're also trying to, to, to push for European football. And th at this stage of, of, of um, the season, the most dangerous teams are teams that got something to play for, whether it's to avoid relegation, to get in European spots, or to win the league. Those are the most dangerous teams right now. Teams that are cruising, and it's kind of like, they're not going to get relegated, they're way too far off, you know, getting a European spot. Those kind of teams, all right. They're kind of already at the beach. They're kind of already all right. Do you know what I'm saying? It's the teams that have got something to fight for. Those are the teams that are that are that are, are going to be hard games, including obviously your derbies and stuff like that, which I'm going to get onto. Then you get Chelsea, and people say, "Oh, Chelsea are dead. Chelsea are dead." Yes, Chelsea are dead. They are dead, but they got Cole Palmer that can hurt us, yeah, because he's been turning up. They got Cole Palmer, and the fact that it's a North London, it's, it's a London derby, sorry, they're going to be wanting to turn up for that game. Trust me, they're going to want to crash an Arsenal's parade. Yeah? Are we supposed to beat those two teams? Yes. But it's not nailed on that we're going to get full points against all those teams. And even if we do, then you're going into the North London derby. A game that we could easily lose, win, or draw. A game that's up in the air. A game that you can't say, oh, because we're, we're we're higher up in the league. Listen, we've lost to them when we've been the better team for multiple years. Qualifying for Champions League. You can never really call out the North London derby. You can never really call it. So that's another game. with a, that's, a, that's a major banana skin for us. Do you know? Potential banana skin. You know what I mean? And then you're looking at teams like Man United. And like I said, Man United played the exact type of football that frustrates Arsenal. Sit back, sit back, sit back. 
Try to hit you on the counter. Every man behind the ball, just defend, defend, defend. And even though Man United are dead, they could at least try and stumble us to a draw. We are still expected to beat them. We're the better team. Yeah, I do believe we've got a better manager. We've got a better squad. But at the end of the day, we saw how playing this sit-back football, playing the dark arts against Porto, how hard it was that the fact that this manager didn't have a, a, a something else to do. He, didn't, he wasn't creative enough to get us out of that situation. So that's that could be another potential banana skin. So it's not guaranteed, yeah, that we're not going to draw more games or potentially lose more games. So this is what I'm saying when people are like, oh, but it's a good point. Yeah, all right, cool. Listen, it's a decent point. Telling me it's a good point? Relax. It's a decent point. It's a decent point. In my opinion, it's a decent point. Yeah, I'm content. I'm not as angry. I'm not angry like I would have been if we lost. But boy, it, it's going to be a roller coaster to the end of the season. Uh, bro, Trossard should have passed the Martinelli facts. Uh, Jesus missed an absolute sit up, bro. The guy's hitting the side netting, bro. Uh, Aston Villa and Chelsea aren't issues since we have home advantage. I'm only concerned um, the way records. Those three teams are bogeys. Um, a bogey when we need to get three points. Listen, I wouldn't say that I'm not. I'm not concerned, but listen, I hear it. The home advantage, bro. But listen, ah, uh, listen, it is what it is. Listen, the one thing I can say is our defense this season has been very, very good. Very, very good. I can't lie about that. That's one thing that I haven't got a lot to, to moan about. Um, <clears throat> um what's this here? What's the man saying here? Uh United, Brighton, and chickens are our main hurdle. Bro, um, yeah, th th those games are, th are definitely big ones that stand out, 100%, bro. Um, oh, look at this. Oh, you're always... But why are you crying? You're always crying, bro. There's no need. We got a draw. We always get pumped there. Bro, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel, innit? That's how you feel, that's how you feel, innit? I'm saying how I feel. And for me, I would have... I wanted to win, innit? I wanted to win, yeah? I wanted to win. Maybe it's PTSD from last season. Maybe it's 20 years of PTSD. But at the end of the day, I wanted to win. The chances were there. And because the chances were there, I wanted to win. If you want to come with it, oh, but the people, the people, the people, the people, the people, bro, that's on you, innit? I'm just saying how I feel, innit? If you feel differently, that's on you. But for me, I wanted to win, bro. I wanted to win. The chances are there. You take your chances. You take your chances. That's how I look at it. But it is what it is. Um... What's this? Twitter and TikTok fans aren't real. Bro, look at the comment sections on YouTube and tell me that they're real on YouTube, bro. The majority on YouTube, are, are they real? So what's the difference? Do you know what I'm saying? What's the difference, bro? I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I hear you. But, bro, I don't think the the, the, the fans on YouTube are, any, are much different, bro. Um... Northside don't give these guys time of the day. Bro, no, I don't, bro. I got my foot on their neck, bro, because I want to win. I want to win, bro. I want to win and I won't let these narratives try and, you know, get us to expect less. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, and I'll keep repeating this, because there's still going to be people thinking, oh, Northside, you're complaining. Oh, but why are you moaning? Sempre reclama, sempre reclama, sempre tengo alguma coisa para falar, sempre tengo alguma coisa para dizer. I have not said that I'm angry. I'm saying that. It's frustrating because the three, I believe the three points was there for the taking. That's what's frustrating. So it is what it is. If, if um, some people take me as angry, then that's on them. It is what it is. If Saka plays against Luton, God help us. We need that guy against other teams. Give the scraps a chance. I hear that, bro. I hear that. If he keeps getting a niggle, bro, we need to flip in. Do you know what I mean? We, we Bro, we need bro, we need to rotate. But the problem is, yeah, this manager don't believe in the bench that he's created. They don't believe in the squad he's created, bro. This is why we can't rotate. Do you know what I mean? This is why he won't rotate. ESR Eddie Ramsdale will go anywhere. Um, will go anyway. So get the two Manchester uh, Manchester City rejects gone. Um what's this? What's this? What's man saying? Um What's this here? Uh, always spitting real talk. Thumbs up, bro. Big up, bro. Big up, man. Come on, man. Listen, I'm just giving my opinion. You know what I mean? I'm just giving my opinion, bro. At the end of the day, yeah, like, I'm not I'm not saying it's a terrible result. I just, bro, I just, I just rather just be, like, level on points with Liverpool. Like, who wouldn't? 
Do you know what I mean? But Top Goon is trying to make it seem like it's incredible getting a draw. I'm not that, nah, bro. Not for me. Not for me. Uh, work <laughs> work rate my ass off for 100k a week. That's what I'm saying, bro. You know what I mean? Means nothing if we don't win the title end of the season. This is what I mean, bro. But these guys, you know how they are, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm baffled by Top Gooners, bro. Bro, I, I'm done with these guys, bro. Um. Draw wasn't good enough. Say your opinion. Spot on, bro. This is why they're scared, bro. They're scared to say it, bro. They're scared to say it. They know if they if they give yeah what the whatever they see the majority of Arsenal fans saying online, they're scared to go against that. Right now, it's the draw is amazing. So anyone that says anything different, you're toxic. You're negative. Cancel you. You just want to moan. You just want to complain. It's not that. If anything, I'm actually giving props to the team. Yeah, I'm giving props to the fact that we did. Even though we conceded all that possession, we still created enough chances. Even though Odegaard was stinky to still win the game. That's me giving props to the fact that we still created without dominating the ball, dominating possession. Giving our front three an abundance of chances, we still created enough chances to win. But, you know what I mean? Bro, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Um, it's not an amazing point for either team. It's more an amazing result for Liverpool. They will be uh, glad since both dropped two points. Better score for Liverpool <coughs> more than Arsenal. Facts, bro. <coughs> facts. Facts. Absolute facts. That's the only person that won. That's the only person that won. Listen, we're not on it, but it is what it is. Uh, uh, feel your pain, no side. Your support are like Trump supporters. Not all, but the ones that are just nuts. Uh, I take the point and the fact that Arteta seems to have learned a lesson finally, but a masterclass would have been three points for me. Yeah, listen, bro, exactly, bro. Yeah, like, listen, he, at least he, he didn't go naive. Yeah, he didn't go trying to play football against a team that you can't, you can't out pep pep. Yeah, and listen, big up to Arteta. And I've even said, I don't put all the blame on Arteta. Like the chances missed, I don't put on Arteta. But the fact that you didn't make changes early enough and the fact that you went for defensive changes instead of attacking changes, for me, you got to do better there. you got to do better. You know what I'm saying? Because the game was in our favour. And I think if he makes the, the, the chances a lot earlier, we never know. Listen, it's not guaranteed we win the game, but at least we have a goal. At least, we, at least the manager really has a goal and says, F it, like, let's go. Let's go for the three points. You know what I mean? Uh, I know City hard to win away, but you can be beat um, on their day, missing chances for Arsenal because you have to win to be top and have it in your hands. It was there, man. Um, <clears throat> exactly. In 2015-16, we were the only team to beat Leicester home and away. It meant nothing at the end of the day. That's what I'm saying. When people are saying, oh, we're the only ones taking top points, taking um, points off of the big, um, off of the big six. If you don't win the league, who cares? And that turns into an irrelevant stat. Absolute facts, Manny. Absolute facts. Uh, what's this here? What's this here? Deluded top gooners are available on AFTV, bro. Saucy Santana loves them, man, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, big up Northside. He's the Mogadishu Scooby Doo. What a clown, bro. This is what we've got, bro, in the fan base. It's a joke, man. It's an absolute joke. Hold on. Let me let me scroll down. Let me scroll down. See what you men are saying. Also, Familia, let me know you lot's predictions as well. Doing a watch along for Tottenham. What's it? Tottenham versus West Ham. Come on, you hammers. You know what I'm saying? Wakanda forever. Yeah, hopefully they win. And Benfica, the derby in the cup. Benfica versus, versus Sporting. We're going live 10 to 8. You know what I mean? So we're going to do a double watch along. Make sure you tune into that as well. Let me know you lot's predictions. What your, what's your prediction for Tottenham West Ham? What's your predictions for Benfica versus Sporting? Let, let me know your, your predictions in the chat right now. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you man are thinking. You know what I mean? Um, What's this here? What's this here? Uh, we need to get uh, Theo Hernandez as the new left back north side is quality. Yeah, we definitely need a better left back, bro. I think Kivio's done well to cover. Let's give him props where props is due. He's done well to cover, but we need an upgrade. We need an upgrade. 100% we need an upgrade. I agree with you there, bro. Attacker played for a draw against City. Nothing wrong with that. Attacker, attackers let us down. Not that, bro. 
Playing the way he played ain't nothing wrong for it with that. But if you if you get those chances, you bring on the players, yeah, that are really that you know are gonna give you a better chance of winning the game. You know what I'm saying? Both wingers had shocking games. Jesus and Saka. There's no there's no reason to to take so long to change it. No reason, bro. And that is why I do I, I in a sense, I also disagree that it is on our tower. It is on our tower because it's for the manager to manage the game. Otherwise, why is he here? If he's not here to manage the game, what's the point? What's the point? You know what I mean? Uh, keeping City behind is very important. Winning uh, was a must, though, since we uh, would need Liverpool to lose. Listen, I do think Liverpool would drop points. I'm not saying that Liverpool wouldn't drop points. Uh, listen, but... Bro, I want it to be in our hands, bro. I don't want to be giving it into the rivals' hands and, and you know, waiting on, you know, them lot to drop points. Will they drop points? Yes. Will they drop more points than us? That's where we just need to do our job. Um, uh, Odegaard needs to be physical. I like him, but the players need to be physical. Bro, it's not even just about physicality, bro. His vision is poor at times. It's very on and off. We've seen games where he releases the ball a lot faster. But then we get games like this. Where it's like, bro, Odegaard, we've seen you play these through balls time and time again. Why is it that you're not doing it? Okay, cool. You miss it one time. But he done it again and again and again and again and again. Bro, what are you doing, bro? Play the through ball. It's not hard. Even if you overheat it, at least the intent is you're trying to play Havertz through. You're trying to play Saka through. You're trying to play Jesus through. It's frustrating, bro. Um, What's this here? Uh, that onion head <laughs> Julian is making me lose brain cells. <laughs> uh, if Saka was injured, why was he playing? Arteta should have sat him, bro. This is what bro, it makes no sense, bro. It makes no sense. We've got a whole medical team. You think those medical team are not giving Arteta a briefing of okay, listen, he's carrying this knock or he's not yet recovered and he needs this and that, but Arteta is just sitting there doing nothing. Come on, bro. It's on the manager, bro. If he's injured, why are you playing him? Why aren't you playing him? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And then you're going to aggregate. So you're actually putting him at risk. Yeah. And then we can, what if he aggravated the injury? Let's say he was injured. Let's say he was carrying an injury going into the game. Yeah. You're, what What if it gets worse? Because Arteta, have you not learned from Partey? You did this with Partey. When Partey was injured one game and you pushed him back onto the field and you told him to carry on. And then all of a sudden, Partey was out for the rest of the season. And it carried on to the next season. And since then, he's had a poor injury record at Arsenal. Are you not learning from that? You should not be forcing Saka to play minutes if you know that he's injured. You know, we talk about Arteta learning from his encounters with Man City. Bro, you need to learn at how you manage your players as well. You've made Partey injury prone. Because his injury record wasn't this poor when he was at Atletico. Do you know what I'm saying? But rushing him back when he's not fit. And then you're going to do that with Saka. Come on, bro. Do you know what I mean? My guy, bro, he's not indestructible. And, and, and we're already seen at this club before a lot of injuries to, to young players. Diaby, Wilshire, players like that. You could, Eduardo. Too many injuries early on or too many injuries back to back. And all of a sudden your career is done. Your career is done. So, we, bro, this is what I'm saying, man. Like he's got to fix up on that. You should not be forcing players to play 70, 80 minutes or play at all if they're injured. Rest them. I know it's Man City, but at the end of the day, there was things that the manager could have changed. If Saka's injured, you can play Trossard on the right. You move him across that right, that um, the front three anyway. So play Saka on the right. Play, um, play Martinelli on the left and play Havertz through the middle. There you go. What's the problem? You didn't have to do that. But this manager, bro, like, he, he just, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't like the way he manages. Um, 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 I, I just don't like the way he manages this, um, the, the injury records. Uh, what's this here? What's this here? Uh, eight games in April, a month when Arsenal have been known to slip up. We'll see, bro. We'll see. We'll see. Big up Northside, bro. Big up the chat. Come on, familia. You already know. Uh, big up Northside. I would be surprised if we managed to beat you guys. But at least same time, I know we won't. The only person who would score would be Cold Palmer. Listen, I'm just saying it's a tricky game. It is a tricky game for Arsenal. It's not nailed on. Do you know what I'm saying? Definitely not nailed on. Um, what's this here? Arteta played for a draw. I already read that. 
Uh, Emery going to pull out Villarreal settings on the cone, man. Hopefully I don't, bro. Uh, you and Lee speak true facts. Bro, thank you, bro. Listen, I just say my honest opinion, bro. But love. Love for the support anyway, bro. Love. Big up to you. You already know. Uh, no, no side, I know Cole Palmer will cost you damage and cost you problems as well. But I don't. I still don't think we will win. But I think he will score. Um... Where the minority, it's tough. No accountability uh, if we win nothing. Bro, they won't. There's another excuse, bro. It's about good and evil, apparently. Hey, Northside, big up to Static, bro. Big up to you, my guy. You know what I mean? Big up to everyone that's in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Um, So salty that these fans still call us cheats. Bro, here's what, you know how Arsenal fans can be, man. The majority. Not all of them. We've got the real ones in the chat. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of them, you know how they can be, bro. It's, it's just jarring. Uh, I want us to get over the line so I can have chest again, but these mutants will be unbearable if we do. I hear it. Uh, big up Northside, best Arsenal fan out there. Come on, bro. Big up to you, bro. Um, listen, I don't think... Listen, I, 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 listen I'll take the compliment. I get a lot of abuse. I'll, I'll, I'll take the compliment. Um, uh, sacrificing your own control of being top of the league for a point totally senseless um what's this here best center back duo in europe need to need a back six and two holding dms to protect them uh is the process written by tony pulis it is what it is man listen defensively i don't think that's that's an area that people can get onto us so far this season let's be real sadly spurs should beat the demoralized hammers 2-1 well everyone's going for 2-1 yeah everyone's going 2-1 spurs uh west ham 2 spurs 1 benfica 1-0 okay listen i'm praying bro i'm praying come on you hammers wakanda forever come on i want to see a meltdown I want to see a meltdown. That's what I need. I need to inject a meltdown into my veins. That is what I need. Inject it. That is what I need. I need a meltdown. Do you know what I'm saying? West Ham 2, Tottenham 1. Come on, West Ham, man. Come on, West Ham. My prediction is 2-2 two, two, um, West Ham Spurs and 1-0 Benfica win. Bro, I think Benfica getting absolutely slapped up today. You think it's a 2-2 two, two draw? Too bad Benfica match is on uh, uh, football TV in the USA. Sorry, my guy. Listen, message me on IG. I can get you a link, bro. I can get you a link. Um, uh, rather have Harry Maguire than Ben White. Nah, I don't know about that one, bro. I don't know about that one. I think Ben White's been actually really, really good. Nah, nah, I don't know about that one. And I actually think Ben White did very, very well with his crossing um, against um, when he's crossing against uh, uh, Man City. I think he's been very, very good in this crossing, to be honest. And I think defensively as well, he's been really good as well. So, listen, I don't know where you're going with that one about Harry Maguire. Um, West Ham, three. Spurs, one. Benfica, two. Sporting, nil. Bro, listen, I hope, I hope, God willing, man, West Ham do their job. I need them Filista Puta, bro. I need these Filista Puta to get the Chinelo like I did back in the day. Just... Whacking these filusta puta, you know what I'm saying? These men need to get rocked today. These men need to get the chinelo today. You know what I'm saying? West Ham 2, Tottenham 1, Benfica 1, nil. Listen, God willing, man, God willing. Uh, West Ham's winning against us, I'm convinced. Bro, God willing, bro, God willing. We have no competent left back and it's frustrating. Only Kivion Zinchenko. The disrespect for Tini is insane. Facts, bro. Facts. Man can't tell me that Kivio and Zinchenko are better than Tini. Absolute BS. Yeah? Going forward, Tini's better than Kivio. Defensively, he won't get rocked like Kivio. Yeah? He won't get rocked like Kivio. And defensively, he's better than Zinchenko. Yeah? And he's a better goal scorer than Zinchenko as well. So he's a, be he's a better left back, bro. He's a better left back. Do you know what I'm saying? But he's not the manager's favourite, innit? I can understand if you parked the bus last season versus Man City being five points clear. But not with one point difference and nine games to go. It's foolishness and will be regrettable. Bro, that's what I'm saying, man. This is what I'm saying, but it is what it is. I don't, I don't get it either, man. I don't get it. Big up Northside. Let's get this man to 10K. Listen, let me tell you something, familiar. Yeah? Man, if you man ain't noticed, I've been putting up the work rate. I've been putting up the, con the amount of content that I put up. From now on, every day, 
two live bits of content every day, Monday to Friday. I will try my best to do two bits of content Saturday, Sunday, but at least one live Saturday, Sunday. Five days a week, two lives every week. I can't, I've got work going on at the moment at my house. So I've got new doors getting put in, so I can't do it at lunchtime today. Otherwise, this live would have been done at lunchtime. And then um, I would have done my second live, which is the watch along today, um, obviously in the evening. But because they were making noise, I had carpenters in my house. I Obviously, I can't do a live with drilling and all that going on. But listen, the content is getting up now. I'm not going to have enough time to go on everyone's channel and stuff like that. We are pumping content. We're getting to 10K. And I'm telling you right now, we're pushing to go full time. The amount of content dropping on the channel is going to increase again. Do you know what I'm saying? Even if I don't have a lunch break, even if I don't have much time to eat, I still ain't had dinner. We are pumping the content. Yeah. Because one thing, big up to my guy Rance and give up, big up to my guy Lee. Do you know what I'm saying? One thing them two told me, which I, I'm, I'm going to have to carry on, is work rate. One thing you can't outdo them two, because people look at people with big subscribers and big accounts, their work rate is immense. Look at the amount of content that they drop on their channels. Lee with two channels, the amount of content that he drops is ridiculous. Rance, the amount of content that he drops is ridiculous. And me now, I want to be in that conversation. I want to be in that conversation and I want to go full time and I want to be in the conversation that every time or nearly every time you turn on YouTube, yeah, no sides live or you drop the live. Do you know what I'm saying? So big up to the familia, bro. We're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. And all the videos that put that are telling me there's somebody that dropped the comment. I ain't even going to put your, 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 your comment up here yeah? because if I don't put your comment up, you're irrelevant. At the end of the day, all the videos that put that, that told me that I can't get there, can't get to 10K. Yeah, cool. You're going to have to eat that. Yeah, we're going 10K and then we're pushing straight through to 20K. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Content's going up. Yeah, everything's going up. You know what I'm saying? And all the few stuff that say, oh, you can only make content when you clip up people. Yeah, get ready. Because most of the content won't be me clipping up people. It'll be all sorts of content. Yeah, so we'll see. And we won't be just talking about Arsenal. So we'll keep going, bro. We'll keep going. You know what I mean? And all the haters, in the, in, in, in the words of Saeed, shush, shush. You know what I'm saying? We're getting there. 10K incoming. Don't worry about that. Yeah? The work rate is going to be A1, like I said. And we're going, I'm actually going live in less than 20 minutes. So listen, the work rate is work rating. Do you know what I'm saying? AFTV is a kindergarten nursery. You have Julian Ty, uh, James, um, and list goes on. Listen, there's a couple of real ones. Dan Potts, you know what I'm saying? I like Premzi. Um, who else? I like Troops that goes on there. Um, Turkish. You know what I mean? There's a couple that I like. But the rest of them, Jokers, bro. Big up my brother. West Ham going to give these man the humble pie and mash bosh. Bro, big up to you, bro. Um, Northside, please tell me how it's a defensive masterclass when Arsenal park the bus, coach, train, car, but Man United do it against Liverpool uh, uh, with less resources and it's a disgrace. Bro. Listen, I, I wouldn't say defensive masterclass, but it was defensively, it was it was solid. I can't lie. For them to only have one shot, we did what we needed to do. I can't lie to you, yeah? But man talking about masterclasses and stuff like that, I wouldn't go as far as that. But, bro, defensively, we was on job. I can't, I can't get onto the team. This game against Man City, I can't get onto the team about how we uh, set out defensively against Man City, bro. Uh, you're not going to hear me, like... Kivio was getting cooked. The manager took him off. That was a that was the move that I wanted. So, you know what I mean. Um, Northside. In order for Saka to revive his game, he has to be played on the left wing, where he can be more direct. Maybe, maybe, bro. But it is what it is. Um, it is what it is, man. He needs to step up in these big games. He needs to step up, man. Keep up the great content. Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying. Come on, bro. We're here. Northside. The fans were celebrating a draw at the Etihad. They just don't want to accept the fact about their poor record at the Etihad. Bro, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I wouldn't be over celebrating it. I wouldn't be angry. You know what I'm saying? But come on, bro. You know what I mean? I get what you're saying. Over celebrating it is a bit too much. I can't lie to you. Come on, Northside. You're almost there to 10K. Love your content. And I'll always support. Always. Come on, bro. Listen, big up to all of you lot, man. Like, honestly, you, man. You know what I'm saying? Push me to keep going as well. Obviously, I love doing this. You know what I'm saying? I love doing it. I was doing this when I only got 50 views on a video, 20 views. I love doing this, bro. But honestly, big up to all of you lot, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments. Even appreciate even when you guys disagree with me, all of it, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? 
You know what I mean? Big up to you, bro. Uh, do more content with Mo. Listen, Mo's busy. The, the thing is, when, you, when you're trying to grow your thing, yeah, you can't be on everyone's channel. It, it just, it, you got to keep pushing your own. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not that I don't want to be on other people's channel uh, more. Big up to Mo. Big up to, big up to Sam. Big up to Lee. Big up to Rance. Big up to Flawless. Big up to uh, Dan Potts. Big up to, bro, all of them, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Big up to um, Deji. Big up to, 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 do you know what I mean? All of them and them, but I, I, you know what I mean? I got a focus, bro. I got a focus to get this channel where I want it to be. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm going to have to be a bit more selfish and be doing more content on my channel. So this is all, this is to out to anyone that may get offended. Oh, no side, how come you don't jump on my channel? No, bro, I'm, listen, I got to be, I got to rake it in a bit. I've only got so much time. I work full time. Eight to five, I'm at work. Do you know what I'm saying? So I've only got so much time. And between that, I'm giving up my lunch break. So I can only do so much, you know what I'm saying? And I've got to push forward. Certain men are already gone full-time. I need to get to full-time. So listen, you know what I mean? If I go full-time, I can drop four lives, three lives a day. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's one of them ones, man. It's one of them ones. The, the work rate on this channel is going up. I see you going 50 by the end of the year. Big up Northside, bro. Yeah, I, I don't know. God willing, bro. God willing. Listen, if, if God is good, bro, God willing, bro. But big up to you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Big up to you. Yeah, bro. Listen, it is what it is, man. We got to work, bro. We got to work, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Bro, we will, bro. We're getting there. You know what I'm saying? We are getting there. Do not worry, bro. Big up to all of you lot. The, the early, the yearly sun screamer still um, to come. We will be there. Uh, Northside Facts, you're growing fast because of the constant, uh, the constant individual shows. You're doing great. Keep up. Bro, come on, bro. Come on, bro. If you men are happy, you know what I'm saying? The content's for you guys. So, you know what I mean? Northside, love your channel, brother. It's great. Keep at it, bro. Much love. Big up to all of you lot, man. And listen, we're going live in 10 minutes, bro. We're going live. Me, uh, I'm not sure if, um, I'm not, I'm not sure if, um, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name now. Um, I've, I've actually forgot his name. Me and Steve are going live. Me and Steve are going live. But, um, the other Donny, I, I can't even believe I forgot his name. I don't know if he's jumping on, but we're, we're going live anyway in a bit. So make sure you stay tuned. Yeah, I'm going to redirect to my to my next live. There we go. Yeah, make sure you like and subscribe. We're going live. Yeah, I literally got 10 minutes and then we're going live. West Ham versus, uh, West Ham versus Spurs and Benfica versus Sporting. We're doing a double watch along. If you man be supporting it, maybe I can do more double watch alongs. You know what I'm saying? But that's what we're going to do. Keep it going, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, man, we're redirecting to my live stream. We're live in 10 minutes, bro. See you guys in 10 minutes. Love for 